Hello and welcome to Prophecy Watchers. I'm Gary Steerman and we have a very special guest with us at this time and he hasn't been with us for a while. Russ Brialt, welcome to Prophecy Watchers. Thank you, Gary. It's great to be back. Thank you. And Russ has done some magnificent work uh, in Bible study, specifically on the subject of the Shroud of Turin. And Russ, the work continues. You tell me that you're just about to publish a book. It'll be out in May or June called Shroud Encounter, Explore the World's Greatest Unsolved Mystery. And you talk about a wonderful mystery. It's, 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 it's not one of those mysteries that you're afraid to find the answer. Uh, this one is, is amazing, and it is uh, very well documented in John chapter 20, where Peter and John run to uh, the tomb of Christ. And in uh, John 20, verse 6, It says, uh, then comes Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulcher and and they see the linen clothes or the linen cloth lie. And so imagine going into a tomb, the empty tomb, and and seeing linen cloth. But not only that, uh, it it indicates that the, the clothing looks like that it's not wrinkled. It's just the way it was laid, except there's not a body in it now. Right, right. Now, you've done a lot of work on the Shroud. Uh, You've been in on some of the inside research. And we're going to talk about that a little uh, today, but we have another subject uh, just after that, and you have to hear that one. But but Russ, uh, when you study the Shroud, uh, what really hits you the hardest about it? What is uh, the real emotional uh, uh, consequence of studying on, on the Shroud? Well, the, um, I, I would say this, that, that we, in, in that verse that you just mentioned, Peter and John ran to the tomb and saw the linen cloth lying there. Peter goes in first, then John follows in, sees the cloth lying there, and believes. And so John becomes the first of the apostles to believe in the resurrection based on the evidence of the linen cloth lying there. You know, one of the interesting things is that, you know, the, the scriptures are silent as to whether there was an image on Jesus' linen shroud. But going back to the 6th century, this is 1,500 years old. This is called the, uh, this is liturgy that is brought to Spain in the 6th century. Translate that same verse of scripture this way. It says, Peter and John ran to the tomb and saw the recent imprints of the dead and risen man on the linens. That's from, that's from the 6th century. And so why would they translate that verse of scripture that way unless it was based on something that they were aware of, something that, that, that they had seen? And so, so I mean, clearly the, the, the shroud, well, my apologetic question then is, was that linen cloth lying there in the tomb, was it only for the benefit of Peter and John? Or was it for the benefit of the whole world throughout all generations? And, and would they have discarded it? There's, there's, there's not a chance. But the point is, is that could that same cloth be in Turin, Italy right now? And I think the answer is yes. The Shroud of Turin, uh, it's very controversial. Uh, there was a scientific study of the Shroud, which I think is probably still continuing to this day. And, and uh, we, uh, one of the things that, that, that really moved me in that study was that the image is not an ordinary image made with the kind of light that we see from day to day. You know, like an electric light bulb or the sun. Uh, We think of light, and when we take a picture, the the light uh, goes onto the surface of either an electronic plate or or the old-fashioned film, and it does the thing it does on the film. But people studying the shroud say, wait, this, this is no ordinary light that made that image. Yeah, there's no ordinary light because it's a light that doesn't generate any heat. And that's the, that's, the, that's the catch right there. As we've been trying to figure out the cause of this image, it's not the result of any kind of paint, ink, dye, pigmentation, or stain. There's no artistic substances on the cloth to account for the image. And so, but what we do see here is an image that seems to look like a scorch, but it's not a scorch. It's not a scorch. In other words, it's not a scorch made by heat. And so what could cause this? And so now uh, researchers have been taking kind of a renewed interest into this phenomenon associated with the Orthodox Church, 
uh, called, it's called the phenomenon of holy fire. And it's been going on for 1500 years. In fact, the first recorded incident is all the way back to 330 AD. And there's another recorded incident in 380 AD. So, and then, um, and so, so what is this thing? And apparently, the, now the Orthodox celebrate their Easter on a different uh, calendar than, than, than we do. And their Easter is designated as the first Sunday following the Jewish Passover and after the, the spring equinox. So invariably, the Orthodox Easter is, is a week to two weeks after you know, our Easter. And so consequently, it's kind, of, it's kind of not really paid much attention to. And it's, um, but for the past 1500 years, there's been something going on there that's pretty phenomenal. And what would happen is on, on Holy Saturday, as it's called, the Saturday preceding Easter, the, um, the patriarch of the Orthodox Church goes to Jerusalem and goes to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. And, and, they, and there is a ceremony that takes place. And they are, they go, now they're inside the Church of the Holy Sepulchre is this what's called the Edicule, which is like a little chapel that's inside the church, which, which covers the actual site of the tomb where they believe Jesus was, uh, was laid. And so, and that, let me just interrupt you quickly here. And for our listeners, the, uh, uh, we think of the garden tomb with the, ro- the, the round stone as the image of the place where Christ was laid to rest. Now, uh, a lot of people, you know, thousands, millions of people have visited that place and they say, this is the place. However, uh, the Church of the Holy Sepulcher uh, has been uh, venerated as, as the place. And so w- we really don't know for sure. And it's a matter of faith. But what you're about to talk about, <clears throat> the, uh, the Greek Orthodox Church has met uh, in this place. Uh, is it nearby the, 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 the burial chamber or, or is it in a chapel? Well, it takes place in the burial chamber. In the burial chamber. Yeah. Okay. And, and they do this when again? Once a year. Once a year. On the Saturday right b- before Orthodox Easter or Resurrection Day. And, and it happens. And so they, the, the patriarch of the Orthodox Church comes, com, comes in. And what the, the, is, the, the Israeli authorities will do is that they will go into this, into the tomb area. They'll check it clean and make sure that there's no lighters or matches or nothing in there. And then they will shut the door to the edicule, which, which is over the side of the tomb, and they'll seal it with a wax seal. The, the patriarch comes, he gets out of his religious garb and puts on just, a, just a, um, a plain white cloth smock or a robe, no pockets. And so he breaks the seal, he goes into the edicule, now with him he has, he has two bundles of 33 candles in this hand, 33 candles in there, but they're unlit. And then he begins to recite prayer, invoking God's presence, invoking his light. Over the, over the slab where the, where the body was laid, he describes this bluish light. But then, because they believe it's plasma, fourth state, fourth state of matter, it kind of takes a shape. And so this, so this gas comes up and forms a column. And then from this, from this bluish light, he takes these candles, puts them into the light, and they ignite. He opens the door, he goes out, and, and now there's, in, in the outer chamber, there's about 700 people there to participate in this ceremony. And, then, and so then they, people light their candles from this. But, and, but here's the interesting thing. This fire, holy fire as it's called, doesn't give off any heat. I mean, they, when, they, when, they, when it's first lit, it was about a, maybe 100 degrees, 105 de- You're degrees talking about or so. The, the, the fire which illuminates his candles. Yeah, that, okay. that fire. That fire. And, it's, um, and so now then there's a great celebration. Now what's also happening outside in the, in the main church 
is there's the, is that there's this lightning type effect. It's like there's all kinds of kind of electrical discharge activity which is happening, and people can feel it. Their their hair on the arms is standing on end, and they can and they can measure it with instruments too that know that there is some kind of an electrical charge happening um, in this in this church associated with this holy fire. And so, and so now you'll see pictures of people with this, with this fire going up around their face, their beard isn't burning, their women are holding their hands over the fire. And so, and so it doesn't give off any heat or any significant heat. Now, after about 25 to 30 minutes or so, it takes on the characteristics of normal fire. So in other words, initially it measures at about 100 degrees and then maybe 20 minutes or 30 minutes later it's 300 degrees and uh, so but this may be a clue we publish a magazine here at prophecy watchers uh, and uh, I, I'm, I'm just going to pause for a minute and contemplate what russ has been saying this is amazing uh the prophecy watcher and uh uh, if you'd like to uh, uh, join us monthly within the Prophecy Watcher, here's how you can do it. In case you haven't noticed, the whole world is spinning out of control. But we are not surprised because many of the things taking place were prophesied in the Bible thousands of years ago. That's why we want to offer you a very special subscription to our magazine, The Prophecy Watcher, that will keep you on the cutting edge of Bible prophecy. Stay informed on prophetic world events. Follow the nuclear threats from Russia and Iran, China's march to world domination, the likelihood of another global pandemic, the rise of artificial intelligence and transhumanism, war in the Middle East, the UFO phenomenon, and the latest technology preparing the world for the mark of the beast. With your gift of $50 or more to support the worldwide outreach of Prophecy Watchers, you will receive 12 issues of the magazine in either print or digital format. You will also receive 10 bonus DVDs that feature in-depth teaching on the ancient book of Enoch, Heaven and the New Jerusalem, the biblical case for the rapture, a look at how God put the gospel in the stars, what really happened at the Tower of Babel, and Ezekiel's prophecy on the battle of Gog and Magog. This special offer is available anywhere in the United States with free shipping included. Don't wait. Pick up the phone right now and call the toll-free number on your screen or visit us at prophecywatchers.tv. Stand with us today and help us take the message of Christ's soon return to the whole world. Well, we're back. And Russ, uh, before the break, we, I was listening very carefully to what you were saying. Uh, this annual event in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, uh, Greek Orthodox uh, priests, I suppose. And they've been doing this for how long? It was done by both Catholic and Orthodox until 1238, when the when the Pope Gregory the, the Ninth disassociated himself with it. I think he, because he probably didn't he 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 wanted it to be his show, and and and, and so he just um, uh, he just said no, we're we're not doing this anymore. And so ever since then, it's been strictly an Orthodox thing, and I just think that I mean. How many Orthodox people do you know? I mean, how many Orthodox churches are there? I mean, there might be, I mean, so it's just, it's just not common. Now, it's common knowledge if you lived in Russia or if, you're, if you lived in, you know, Romania or, or, uh, or some of those Eastern Bloc nations that are heavily Orthodox. It's very well known there. It's just not known in the West. Hmm. Now, let's talk about the phenomenon itself. Uh, we uh, we know about the Church of the Holy Sepulcher to an extent. Uh, I remember the first time that that I went to Israel. I, I visited the Church of the Holy Sepulcher and, and had walked into the tomb and w was told by several people that uh, that this tomb uh, could very likely be the tomb of, from which Jesus rose. And you know there are some competing locations like the Garden Tomb we've talked about, but uh, the the fact is 
this church of the Holy Sepulcher, there's something about it, ancient. Uh, people have venerated this place in a very special way uh, for centuries. But to hear about this event, which has an almost supernatural cast to it, um, is, uh, is fascinating for one reason. Why is it just becoming known to us now? You know, I just, you know, I think that God, even something can be hidden in plain sight until God is ready to reveal it. When God is ready to reveal it, then it'll be revealed. And so I, I think that maybe now is the time. And, and I, I just think it's really intriguing that the shroud right now, as of 1983, is owned by the current living pope. Now, prior to that, it was, it was in private hands. It was owned by the Savoy family for over 500 years, and all the kings of Italy came out of the Savoy family. Was, but essentially, the Catholic Church has been the custodian of the shroud for the past 700 years. But then, when the shroud launched into the realm of scientific investigation in the 20th century, then a bunch of Protestants and even, and even several Jews got involved in this research. And so now it involves the Protestant church or Protestants through science. And I just think it's intriguing that, that, this, that this, so now we know all the properties of the image, that it's, that it's not the work of an artist. It appears, it looks like a scorch, but it's not the result of heat. So maybe now is the time to take a look at something that's been going on for all these centuries, some, some kind of fire, some kind of plasma incident that, 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 that doesn't have any heat and that the Orthodox have always associated with the resurrection. And so maybe it's time for this to be the final clue as to, as to what is the cause of the shroud image. And the shroud image, and I've read the books and a lot of the papers that they're not public papers. And the phenomenon of the image on the shroud uh, takes us beyond current science. Uh, it takes us, you, you mentioned plasma a, a minute ago as the fourth state of matter, you know, and, and we have uh, solid liquid gas and plasma. What is plasma? It's an energetic uh, conglomeration, a cloud of, of some sort of energy that can be directed and, and it can actually leave traces when it passes by something. And uh, most of the scientists today who have looked at the shroud use that term, plasma, mm -hmm. or, or some sort of energy that we don't commonly deal with today, right? Well, some kind of light um, is what I would, many researchers would believe, um, because you know you, you have a pattern of blood stains on the cloth, which is clearly the result of direct contact with the body, but the image is something different. The image is not the result of direct contact with the body, but is some other process. And so researchers have been looking at, 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 at light. And one of, the, one of the prominent experiments that was done and published in 2011 is that, the, is that they did experiments with, uh, with, with high power lasers. And they determined that a 40 nanosecond burst on a UV laser against a control sample of linen achieves the same depth and coloration as we see on the shroud. So this is an example of, you know, qualities of the shroud that can be generated using this intense light. And um, so here's what I think is a possibility, is that, is that Jesus is in the tomb. He's wrapped in a burial shroud. And at a certain point in time, his body is converted to a volume of light and basically disappears and leaving in its place uh, where the body was this plasma field of 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 low it, it's 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 low heat but it is but it is electrically charged negatively charged and this could have left a kind of a light singe scorch on the cloth but not the result of heat and so I think that this may be what we're looking for or what we've been looking well, for. This, the, the biblical phrase is, uh, talking about the rapture, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, in other words, a very, very short span of time. Snap of the fingers. Uh, we are going to go in the same way that he did, the rapture of the church. 
and uh, there is some uh, dispersal or release of energy associated with this, and it, it's beyond current science, which I love. I love the idea that our, our Lord is beyond current science because uh, you've got something there to, to say to yourself, you know, I've still got a lot to learn. And by the way, so has science, right? Absolutely. <laughs> and you call, you, you have, a, I think it's a wonderful label you have put on the Shroud of Turin, proof of purchase. Yes. yes. That is to say, uh, it's, it's like a receipt. There it is, the Shroud, and it's a record of uh, something that... Uh, that bought our salvation, and our salvation is bought and paid for, and there's the receipt lying in the tomb as proof of that fact. I agree with you. I think it is a, I think it is a record of the transaction, and it's, um, and, and you know, the, the last word Jesus spoke on the cross is a, that word tetelestai. It's a Greek word. Yes. Usually translated as it is finished, but can also be translated as paid in full. Same exact word. Paid in full. And so that's what I think the shroud is. I think it's an itemized receipt documenting everything that was paid to purchase our salvation. Well, you've got to hurry and get that book out because I, I want to read it. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to pause here for, the, for a message and we'll be right back. The Shroud of Turin is the most investigated artifact in world history. Does the burial cloth of Jesus provide evidence of his resurrection? Did Jesus leave behind his image on the cloth for a generation that one day would have the scientific equipment to discover a faint image of a crucified man on the shroud? All the evidence points towards Jesus as the man on the shroud. Yet there are many objections which are answered by Russ and Mondo on a new two-hour DVD. This is all about acknowledging proof of the resurrection, not about worshiping the shroud. Russ has put together a Shroud of Turin print package that contains evangelistic materials for using the shroud as a witnessing tool. Color photos, extensive brochures, bookmarks, and small cards, all designed to start conversations. It's available for your gift of $40 or more, with shipping included in the USA. We've also assembled the Holy Fire Package, a shocking revelation that took all of us by surprise. Many believe that Jesus rose from the dead in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. For the last 1,500 years, on the day the Orthodox Church celebrates the resurrection, a lengthy prayer is offered, asking God to show His presence in the tomb. A warm fire that doesn't burn like traditional fire then appears in the form of plasma and proceeds to move around the room, landing on the people in a way that seems to be similar to the tongues of fire we see on Pentecost. Needless to say, it's an emotional moment for the people who believe they've experienced God's presence. And as they say, a picture is worth a thousand words. You'll see the evidence of the holy fire on a new hour-long DVD featuring Russ, Gary, and Mondo. Perhaps for the first time, this new information may explain how the image of the shroud was created. The Holy Fire package includes three of Russ's latest DVD studies on the shroud, CSI Jerusalem, Secrets of the Man Clothed in Linen, and Could the Shroud of Turin Be a Receipt of the Resurrection? The package is available for your gift of $60 or more, and it comes with two free bonuses, the two DVDs we've created on the objections to the shroud and an hour-long discussion on holy fire. Call the toll-free number on your screen 24-7 or visit us online at prophecywatchers.tv. For our international friends, please know that additional shipping fees will apply and all prices quoted are in U.S. dollars. Could the shroud be evidence that a loving God left for us in these last days? Most of all, understand that Jesus loves you. His sacrifice on the cross paved the way for us all to spend eternity with Him. If you don't know Him, make today the day of your salvation. Well, we're back with Russ Brialt, and we're talking about a couple of things. We're talking about the shroud, as mentioned uh, in the Bible, and as uh, uh, witnessed by uh, millions of people uh, all over the world, 
and it has become very famous. But now, added to that, we discover that at the, at the tomb of the Holy Sepulchre, uh, something happens annually that illustrates that that energy may be present in some way that we don't yet understand. Yeah, and it's that it's that mystery of holy fire, the the phenomenon of holy fire, and you know what I like what it really intrigues me is is the fact that that now it incorporates all three branches of Christianity. The Catholics have been the custodian of it for the past seven hundred years. Uh, the Protestants have gotten involved through modern science and trying to investigate it from the standpoint of, of an archaeological artifact. And now we find that the Orthodox may have been holding on to the clue that we've been looking for all these years. What is the cause of this image that, is, that, uh, that, uh, that appears like a scorch but is not the result of heat? Let's uh, kind of close on this idea of the holy fire. Uh, what are they doing now, or what? who has done what to study this phenomenon? Has it been scientifically uh, uh, probed at this point in time? Yeah. Well, my, uh, my good friend, uh, Giulio Fanti, who is a professor at, um, in, uh, at a uh, university in, in Italy, he's just written this book called Holy Fire and Div uh, the, the Holy Fire and the Divine Photography. And it uh, just came out, um, in, um, and he's, done, he's applied some scientific um, uh, tests to validate that the, the phenomenon associated with the holy fire. And, and, um, he got, and he put it up to his beard, and his beard didn't burn either. And, and he did some experiments to show that, that you know, and, and comparing it to fire lit with a lighter, and notice that there were some radical differences between normal fire and this thing called holy fire. And so, um, so I would say that if anyone's interested in it, uh, they should pick up this book. It'll set you back. Uh, it's not. It's not a cheap book. But if you're interested, you know, go ahead and get it. So it's. Uh, I think you'll find it fascinating. You know, we're to, we we here at Prophecy Watchers, we, we touch on subjects that are maybe just a little bit out there on the edge sometimes. And somebody's, well, why are you talking about this? Well, you know, uh, our Lord uh, was a man, but he was also God. And God does things and knows things that we don't even have a clue about. And when occasionally... We run into the artifacts that cause us to question, like this route, and now like the holy fire. And uh, we don't worship the holy fire, we don't worship the shroud, but it's, it's sort of there as a record that something did happen and that Jesus was indeed uh, the Son of God and, the, and God himself uh, who arose on the third day. And we have just enough proof that if you're faithful, hey, you can believe right? Amen. You know, keep up the good work. I can't wait to see your book. Russ Briault, he's working on a book that uh, is going to combine all of the uh, elements of his studies over the years, and I will be among the first to read it, I hope. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Gary Stearman. Hey, you keep watching. We are 